So I was, uh, I wanted to make a video, um, I make videos on martial arts occasionally, being that I was um, invited to potentially uh, train uh, elderly folks in uh, Qigong and in uh, self-defense, I wanted to make a quick video on how to boost the efficiency of martial arts, uh, not only for people with... Um, you know, with uh, physical issues, such as the elderly, but also for all people, because a lot of times karate has become somewhat of a, a, a more of a joke, more of a child's activity anymore. When in the 80s and 90s, it was it was it was uh, pretty badass. You have a lot of badass fighters uh, from that time era, and of course from the uh, 50s, 60s, 70s, etc. You have some badass fighters from those days. But the one thing is, my instructor was a hand-to-hand -hand combat instructor for the United States Marine Corps. And he taught us what's called line fighting. Now, we didn't call it line fighting, but that's what it was. So the, the book that I would recommend most, if not all, martial arts instructors read, particularly karate instructors, Karate, this is in essence karate. It's called the U.S. Marine Corps Close Quarter Combat Manual. Now, what LINE stands for is Linear Involuntary Neurological Overriding Engagement. And yes, I had to write that down because we don't use acronyms like that in karate class usually. So, Linear Involuntary Neurological Overriding Engagement. The techniques in line fighting are meant to be, essentially, they're meant to be uh, basically able to be performed in low light conditions, low visibility conditions, such as if you're under a gas attack, wearing, a, wearing you know, a respirator, or it's dark, or things like that. These are real life self-defense conditions. If you're down, if you're downtown, you know, and you're hanging out and, you know, somebody engages with you or you're going to the bar and somebody engages with you or you're doing or you're somewhere in a low visibility situation and somebody engages with you, you have to perform a counterattack to defend yourself. And that's exactly what these are. Now, the other thing about line fighting is if the technique is performed properly, it will result in the death of the attacker. Uh, now, that's very uh, important to understand. These can also be done by people that are injured or have uh, physical, uh, that aren't as physically healthy. So it makes it perfect for people like women and the elderly uh, and, you know, such things. Now, how would I recommend uh, making karate better for you know, the everyday person. Well, I would recommend that more karate schools implement physical fitness, more physical fitness into their routines. What kind of physical fitness fits martial arts? Well, you know, look at the Marine Corps and the Coast Guard and the Army. Look at how they work out with calisthenics and things of that nature. There's going to be links in the description to all of this. Uh, the other thing is, what about diet? Well, the diet that should be recommend, recommended for karateka is, karateka means karate practitioner, uh, is essentially uh, an Okinawan-style diet, or at the very least, a diet that is similar to an Okinawan-style diet, uh, such as like, the, like what's recommended in the Blue Zone book or the macrobiotic diet. Uh, so you want to, and this is the thing, one of the reasons that a lot of people today suck at karate, that did not suck at, like these same people didn't suck at karate years ago, but they suck now, is because they've allowed themselves to become physically unhealthy. And I know what this is like because it happened to me, okay? I let myself get out of shape and I had to begin getting back in shape. But there's uh, no excuse for it, especially if you're actively teaching martial arts. Uh, the other thing is, one of the reasons that modern karateka are not as good as people in the 80s and 90s or 70s and 60s 
is they are not engaging in the same rigorous physical training. The knuckle push-ups and things of that nature that we used to do that would help us to balance our, you know, to balance our punches and strengthen our wrists and things of that nature. And you don't really need knuckle push-ups, especially with the line fighting, because very few of it actually uses a closed fist. But the thing is, this type of close quarter combat, which is actually present in Tung Sudo, Tung Sudo does have these close quarter combat engagements, but not like the Marine Corps, not like my instructor updated a lot of the a lot of the uh, stuff. Now, when I was in, when I was actively taking karate class. I was never interested in karate. Like, I wasn't like, look at my pretty kicks. Look how pretty. The, the reason I took karate, bottom line, was as a means of counterattack in case my life was in danger. And the other reason I took karate was for my ability to teach others karate. That's the primary reasons I took karate. Plain and simple. Okay? That's it. I was not somebody that was like, oh, look at this, look at that, blah, blah, blah. I liked to weight lift. I liked, uh, I liked to do a lot of more uh, physical things. I liked to run a lot. That's another thing. Running is imperative to the, to the conditioning of a martial artist. Uh, how many martial artists do you know that go running? Not many. The problem with martial arts is martial arts has become a hobby. If you want to be good at martial arts, you have to learn to be a martial artist. And to be a martial artist, uh, you know, you have to practice outside of the school as well as inside of the school. And run, what's called road time, what boxers call road time, which is running, is an imperative part of building the endurance necessary for karate. Now, the truth is, in a self-defense situation, unlike a match in the ring, uh, endurance is, while it's important, this is the thing, endurance is not so important in a life or death situation, because that fight is only going to last a few seconds, okay, and the techniques used in that situation are not really that complex, they're essentially, if somebody grabs you, you snap their windpipe, if somebody grabs you, you stick your thumb in their eye, if somebody grabs you, you grab them by the ear and, you know, twist and you throw them on their back and whatever. You know, so it, the techniques, the, the, a, a life or death kind of survival sort of fight is not going to last that long that you're going to need the endurance. But why is endurance important? Well, number one, it's important for your longevity. The cardiovascular conditioning is important for your longevity. But... It's also important in the sense that when we have physical achievements, when we make athletic achievements, when we gain muscle mass, when we lose fat, when we look better, it helps our confidence. Confidence, not hubris, but confidence is extremely important in winning a confrontation with somebody that's trying to kill you. Because you don't want to be, you don't want to cower from the danger. You want to attack back, okay? If you can't attack the danger because you are not confident in who you are, because you're out of shape, etc., it doesn't matter what techniques you know, it doesn't matter because you're not going to implement them. So physical fitness does a lot to serve as a confidence builder. Not to mention the strength, the raw strength that is necessary in martial arts is cultivated by things like, you know, by weightlifting. And the other thing is there's been a lot of nonsense about functional strength versus non-functional strength, bodybuilding. Like a lot of people claim that body, the strength gained during bodybuilding is not functional. Uh, in case you're wondering, all strength is functional. Okay, it's kind of silly to say that, you know, people that train uh, body parts in an isolated manner are not gaining functional strength. They are gaining functional strength. Because strength is functional. If it wasn't, their strength would not be increasing. If you don't believe me, ask somebody that's a bodybuilder to pick something up 
And if you're not a bodybuilder or you're not a, a weight trainer or anything like pick up the same thing, I bet you it's going to be pretty hard. Okay, uh, so my point is, is that's another thing that people need to remove from their minds. When I began karate, I was very fat. Okay, so the way, uh, luckily my brother had a weight set. And my brother was a maniac with the weightlifting until he got into drugs. And uh, my brother was a bodybuilder. And luckily, he had a weight set because I was too weak to do karate. I was too weak to move my fat around. Uh, however, weightlifting made me strong enough to do the karate. Once I was strong enough to do the karate, I excelled in karate. But you have to gain the strength to move yourself about. Now, with the, uh, the uh, what do you call it, uh, linear involuntary neurological uh, overriding engagement or line fighting, the whole idea of that is so that weaker people or injured people or impaired people can over, overcome a greater, an adversary that's more prepared at uh, harming them than they are at harming them, I meaning physically a physically better specimen, a weaker person can overcome them. That is the heart and soul of line fighting. However, line fighting, obviously your average U.S. Marine is in much better shape than your average American. So that's why people should seek to at least be able to pass the Marine physical fitness, uh, you know, physical fitness uh, uh, requirements. Now, where does line fighting come from? Uh, this is the thing. Combatives are essential. Uh, like the, the whole idea of combatives. Everybody knows what Krav Maga is now. Uh, Krav Maga, I, I don't think that that's necessary. I would highly recommend people that teach karate simply look into the books that I'm talking about. Uh, learn about Defendu. Learn about people like William Fairbairn, Rex Applegate. Uh, learn the, the Marine Corps and the United States Army hand-to-hand -hand combat. You'll catch on very quick because it's essentially the same exact thing as Funakoshi Karate. It's the same exact thing as Tung Soo Do. It's the same exact thing as Taekwondo. It's the same exact thing as certain forms of uh, Kung Fu or Kenpo. It's just a different way of performing these techniques in a more aggressive, more straightforward, and more effective manner. But the techniques are the same techniques, okay? The control that you gain in martial arts in how to perform your techniques, because when we train, obviously, we're not trying to kill each other, will be the same amount of control that you need to perform these techniques while training your class or training your instructors in how to perform these things. So these techniques are exceptionally important because, as I stated, these techniques are extremely effective. If these techniques are performed properly in a self-defense situation, they will result in the whoop of the enemy, of the attacker. So that is why this form of, this system of martial arts is so important at boosting the ability of your student to actually defend themselves, okay? And it's particularly effective for teaching women and the elderly how to defend themselves, okay? With children, uh, a lot of time now, they should know how to defend themselves and all that, but really with children, they need to be working on getting attention of, as to what's going on and things of that nature. Uh, that's all for this video. Links are in the description. Check them out. Have fun. Uh, also, links on the Okinaw well, Okinawan style diets, the uh, the Kushi, uh, the, what do you call it, the macrobiotic diet, uh, and different uh, diets and exercise programs, as well as the history of combatives. And uh, that's all for this video.